Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for attending my presentation today for the paper of Explorator Genus, Designing Transportable Mechatronic Sound Objects for Outdoor Installation Art. So um, this paper was authored by uh, a group of us at Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand, including myself, Nathan Diakanya Shaw, Professor Dale Carnegie, Jim Murphy, and also Mozari. Today I'm going to be discussing um, a few different topics. We're going to be discussing the HyperSoundWalk high-level research project that this project is a part of. I'm going to talk about the pop-up soundscape-specific exhibition strategy that's used to exhibit these works. I'm going to provide an overview of the hardware systems, the firmware systems, as well as introducing the five distinct explorator species that were created for this paper. So um, the Explorator genus is part of the larger HyperSoundWalk research project. Now, the term HyperSoundWalk was a play on the term hyperinstrument, in which instruments, uh, musical instruments, are augmented with sensor and actuator technology in order to expand their expressive capability. So, in the same way, what we're doing with this project is we're taking in situ natural soundscapes and then we're um, augmenting those sonic environments with uh, sensors, actuators, and um, are a group of portable, adaptable, environmentally protected electronic creatures. And we uh, call this creating hypersoundscapes. And then what we do is we explore these hypersoundscapes um, and experience them through the process of sound walking. So moving slowly through the environment while intently listening to the sounds. And that's how we get to uh, hypersound walking or hypersound walk. The Exploratory Project is the second of three projects that falls within the hypersound walk paradigm. The first of which was the Exploratory Genus, which focused on uh, illuminated visual feedback and non cochlear augmentation, and that was published in 9 2021. In addition, this work at, from a higher level is inspired by a, a long lineage of um, installation artworks that prioritize in situ natural environments, and uh, both uh, sonic artworks and, and otherwise. So this includes much of the work of Mills Udo, um, Nancy Holt, and for instance, uh, the Gallery Transplant series of uh, Oppenheim. So um, this is also inspired and motivated by um, observed works of outdoor musical mechatronics, in addition to modular musical mechatronics, including the work of Eric Singer and, and Ajay Kapoor with Modulus at California Institute of the Arts. Throughout this paper and throughout the related HyperSoundWalk um, research project, we refer to um, the artifacts we create using a taxonomic nomenclature. So on, at the very top of this system, we have the Acropolis family, which incorporates uh, the shared hardware systems, firmware systems, design considerations, and artistic considerations. And then within the Acropolis family, we have our three different genre. So we have the Speculator, which was published in 2021. We have the Explorator Genus, which is the topic of this paper as well as the Legatus Genus, which is a parallel publication that's published this year in Nime, and that one focuses on loudspeaker-based augmentations. So I'm going to talk uh, quickly about the exhibition strategy that's used for uh, the hyper sound walking. And we use what's called a pop-up exhibition installation strategy, which is can briefly be summarized as creating, as um, realizing these works in a way that prioritizes the in-situ sonic environment, choosing the location in which we exhibit these works based off of the sound's presence in that location over the visual qualities of it or logistical qualities of it. Um, in order to do this, uh, we start by conceptualizing an installation scenario. We determine what sonic environment would be best paired along with their artistic intent. And then we um, leverage uh, the Explorator genus, uh, design templates, the PCBs, the power systems, firmware, and then we build a unique um, artifact that can realize this, this uh, artistic vision. And then once we go to the out, then what we do is we take the uh, the built artifact, we travel around until we find that target soundscape. So the soundscape may not necessarily be in the same place um, day after day. So we um, load it up into our vehicle, we drive around, and then we listen. We stop at, at locations where we think that we may be able to find that soundscape. We check to see if it's present. And if it is, then we uh, install the artifacts and we let the installation run its course. If not, then we travel to another location where we could possibly find that soundscape and so on and so forth until we find an appropriate venue. Um, then we, um, these installations are typically uh, conducted over a relatively short period of time of a day or less. Um, these installations are um, picked up and, and packed away if our target sonic environment ceases to exist 
or at the end of the day. And this um, has an added benefit of, of providing minimal environmental impact on the locations in which we install these artifacts, as well as giving, trying to maximize our control over the sounds present um, during the installation. Um, now I'm going to talk about the hardware systems um, that are used for the exploratory uh, genre. So um, the hardware systems consist of two main parts. There's a mainboard PCB and there's also a um, breakout PCB. So the mainboard PCB has two variants. Uh, the larger first version of this uh, contains nine channels of solenoid outputs. It has three channels of DC motor outputs. Um, both PCBs are powered by a TNC 3.2 microcontroller, and both um, PCBs provide um, user control uh, connectors that allow us to mount the various power switches and, and operating mode switches on the enclosure of these artifacts. Um, the boards have onboard voltage regulators, and we also have a connector to, for connecting them to power. And this allows them to run off of either lithium-ion batteries or lead-acid batteries, depending on what the engineering needs for the particular species is. Um, we also have a smaller version of the PCB, which is uh, used on the, the last and, and uh, and fifth species that was designed, which essentially has most of the same components but just fewer output channels. So there's uh, two channels of solenoids, one channel of a DC motor, and there's also the added benefit of having onboard neo pixel LEDs. And then some of the sensors that are um, on the breakout PCB are moved to the to mainboard PCB, which allows us to um, build artifacts that don't need an external sensor. Um, PCB if it's not needed for the artistic and uh, engineering considerations for that species. So yes, as I mentioned before, there's a, also a breakout PCB. Um, this is oftentimes um, in, well, on, on the first two artifacts, we built a uh, acrylic enclosure to place this, this, um, this board into, and this allows us to offload um, the sensors from the main enclosure, from the primary enclosure. This gives us more flexibility in terms of controlling the size, the aesthetics of the artifact, as well as uh, optimizing uh, its listening capabilities and environmental sensing capabilities on, on some occasions. The sensor breakout PCB has 10 NeoPixel LEDs on it, has the ambient light sensor, it has a, a microphone, as well as a uh, temperature and humidity sensor. Great. So um, now I'm going to discuss the firmware quickly. So the firmware, um, so all the Hyper Soundwalk projects use the same code base, um, and the firm the firmware for the Explorator specifically expands the capabilities of this firmware code base that was established in um, 2021 to include DC motor control, solenoid control, firmware triggered hardware shutdown, um, rhythm transcription, as well as rhythm playback capabilities. And it also includes um, and uses all the functionality that was present with the speculatory project, including NeoPixel control, ambient light sensing, temperature humidity sensing, uh, firm, firmware triggered hardware sleep, audio transduction, time domain audio feature extraction, and frequency domain audio feature extraction. Great. So um, under this, this project with Explorator Genus, we created a total of five different species that are each distinct. They use um, all the hardware and firmware systems I discussed earlier, but have different artistic intents and different vocalization method. The first species that we created was is Explorator Chirper. And Chirper features uh, three vocalization methods, or each of the mechanisms has a desk bell of a variable sizes, a small one, a medium one, and a large size one. And they're all struck by a solenoid, which you can see at the top of the right-hand image. And then each of the mechanisms also has a dampening solenoid. So there's a 3D printed rubber uh, dampening mechanism, which is pressed up against the bell. And then the, this allows us to um, remove the dampening mechanism to allow the bell to ring, or leave the dampening mechanism in, in contact with the bell in order to dampen the effects. And um, the intention of this was for us to be able to listen to the sonic environment, identify different pitches that were present in birdsong and various other uh, animal vocalizations, and then to have the artifact um, kind of uh, attempt to have a jazz-like call and response dynamic along with the sonic environment using different uh, pitched uh, vocalization mechanisms as well as uh, rudimentary control over the dynamic envelope. And this is a picture of the chirper installed in the Sierra Nevada foothills. The second species we created is Explorator Chipper. 
Um, Chipper is named Chipper uh, based because its sonification or its vocalization mechanism is based around the sounds created by, by woodpeckers pecking into trees. Um, so in order to do this, we took a solenoid and we um, attached a ceramic chisel picking mechanism to the bottom of it. And then the picking mechanism strikes down on this wooden disc, which rotates throughout the course of the installation in order to provide a sort of a visual score of the activity that the artifact engaged in during the length of this exhibition. And here's a picture of a chipper installed at um, the Joshua Tree Forest in the Mojave Desert um, ju just a few weeks, maybe a few months after a large wildfire um, ravished the area. The third species of crater is Explorator ch Clapper. <laughs> Clapper has a, um, a, a relatively simple vocalization mechanism that includes a solenoid that strikes a um, hollow metal box. And this creates a um, transient clapping or, or snapping kind of sound, and, which was the intention of the artifact. Um, it was meant to explore um, various uh, the acoustics of environments that it's installed within. The original intent was to have this artifact um, vocalize to seed the environment with the sound through s snapping into the, the metal box and then listening for any echoes or reverberations uh, that the environment provides. And then um, with the ultimate goal of being able to then determine how long it takes for those for the echo to return back to the artifact and then to reinforce that sound by clapping at the same time as uh, the echo returns. The third artifact is Explorator Spinner. Spinner used, um, took a slightly different approach in terms of this vocalization mechanism. It was um, aiming to create a a sound that was more inspired by geophony. So the sounds produced by wind, by um, water, by basically environmental sounds that were not created by humans and not created by animals. So it, it used a, um, a kibasa, which is a sort of a rhythmic instrument that, that has these metal beads that rotate around the perforated metal center. Um, this is controlled using a DC motor along with an optical encoder to provide closed loop feedback, and it would spin um, this device uh, over extended periods of time, which also allowed this artifact to create a longer sustained vocalization periods. Uh, the, the fifth and final species we created is Explorator Winder. Um, Explorator Winder, um, once again, has a different vocalization mechanism that is inspired by anthropony, so sounds produced by humans. In order to do this, we, cre we grabbed um, secondhand uh, these little music boxes and then used a, a similar DC motor optical encoder closed loop feedback system in order to wind these music boxes up and then unwind them uh, according to the needs of the current installation. Now, um, we exhibited these different species in a variety of locations. This is a picture of Clapper's Travels. Um, and, the, and most of the places that we installed these works were within um, the western and southwestern states in the United States of America. In the top left, there's a picture of the Great Salt Lake. In the top right, we have Badwater Basin, which is located in Death Valley in California. In the bottom left, we have the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And in the bottom right, we, we have a Tuzigut, which is a Native American rune, um, which is also located in Arizona. So uh, to conclude, the Explorator genus is the second of three related hardware projects that was developed to create environmental reactive outdoor sonic installation artworks. Um, there were five distinct Explorator species that were developed, built, and exhibited with shared hard hardware systems, dynamically compiled firmware, as well as physical design strategies. So it was the shared use of the hardware systems, the firmware, and the physical general physical design strategy, which um, made them a part of the Explorator species. Species. The Explorator species were exhibited in a total of five states in the United States using the pop-up exhibition strategy to prioritize in-situ sonic environments. And the high-level hypersoundwalk project aims to highlight and foster appreciation for the dynamicism and music-like qualities present in outdoor natural sonic environments. I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you um, watching my <laughs> recorded presentation. Uh, I deeply regret not being able to attend this year. Um, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this work, any questions about the Hypersoundwalk project, or um, Speculator or Legatus. Thank you very much.